Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keeping Fish Simple. So in today's video, we are gonna be talking about baby fish and what to feed them. And in specific, we're gonna be talking about the top foods for fry. Fry are what we call baby fish in the aquarium hobby and my guess is that if you're here, you're either an experienced breeder just looking for some alternatives and some recommendations on what I feed my fry, or you're either a beginner and you've got some baby guppies, or you have some baby fish that you found in your aquarium and you're looking for something to feed them. So in today's video, I'm gonna start off with the beginner who's you know, just found a fry in their tank or they've got some baby guppies and they don't know what to feed to those fry. And then from that, I'm gonna go all the way to an experienced breeder and talk about things that I feed my fry. Without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the circumstance that you might have like some baby guppies in your aquarium and what would I recommend to feed those? So the first food on my list is gonna be literally crushed up flake or pellets. This might seem really obvious to a lot of people, but when I first had my guppies start breeding, I had no clue what to feed them. It didn't become obvious until I saw another fish keeper doing it but you can literally take your flakes use like a mortar and pestle and just really grind them up into a powder and you can feed that into your aquarium and that works really well for a lot of guppies and even for really really small fry like rainbow fish and stuff like that it depends how small you want it if you crush it up into little pieces and it can fit inside the guppy's mouth they're gonna eat it and it's gonna be a really good food for a circumstance like that. This also will have like a fully balanced diet for the start of their life. It's got a ton of nutrients in it, depending on which flakes you got, and it should work really well. The second thing on my list is gonna be commercially prepared foods for fry. So what I'm talking about is things like golden pearls and Hikari first bites. Those are basically just crushed up flakes, but you can also buy them from a store. They might be formulated for fry. I've used them before and they work pretty well. I just use them as like a supplement if I can't be bothered to do something else, like if I just wanna feed something quickly. They work really well. I use a Curry first bites and that can also be an option for you guys. In my personal opinion, I'd just grind up some flakes if you're gonna feed that stuff instead of going to the shops and actually buying it if you need to do something in a rush. Okay, and then the third food on my list is gonna be egg yolk. This might sound a little bit shocking to a lot of people, but egg yolk is actually a fantastic food to feed to a lot of fry. It's got a lot of really good nutrients in there and when I talk about egg yolk, what I'm talking about is just taking like a chicken egg that you get from your grocery store, boiling it and then taking that hard boiled egg yolk out, like you know, the orange stuff. I think it's orange, I'm colorblind. Take that, mix it up in a bit of water and feed this to your fry. I feed this to a lot of my like German blue ram fry. It's the first food I feed to all my ram fry and I also feed it to baby rainbow fish and I know a lot of people also feed it to discus and basically it works for any kind of fry. I've used it a lot. I use it in my auto feeding system. It works a treat. It's a really good food to use. So just take an egg, boil it, take the egg yolk out, like make sure it's really hard put it in a bit of water and then just feed it with like a little tube or just pour it in there and you'll see all those little particles come through and the fish should eat them. You do have to be careful here because this stuff can really pollute your water. So if you don't have like the fry in an open body of water, you do have to clean out your containers really well to make sure it doesn't pollute the water because it really can just turn the water from clean to dirty in like no time. Okay, and so now we're getting into some of the foods that are gonna be a little bit more complicated, but it doesn't mean that you guys should be scared of it. And if anyone here is serious about breeding, you definitely need to get involved in doing this. It's really easy. There's tons of videos on YouTube on how to do all these foods. They're not complicated because if they were complicated, no one would be using them. But number four on my list is gonna be microworms. Microworms are an interesting one because I use microworms for a few things. I don't really like microworms that much and I've actually ended up not really using them a lot in my fish room. And this is because they don't have a lot of nutrients. What microworms are are tiny little like microscopic worms. I think they're microscopic. You can see them with the naked eye pretty easily. What they are is just little nematodes, I think. That's what I think they are. I'm not too sure, so don't quote me on it. Basically, the way you culture them is you get a little container, you mix up some oatmeal or some mashed potatoes. You have to get a starter culture from like another breeder or another hobbyist, add the starter culture, and then you just culture them. And you can scoop them off the side of the container when you want them feed them to your fry and they last in the water for eight to 10 hours and the fry will eat them up because they're actually a live food and they'll wriggle in the water. And they're really good for like baby rams, rainbow fish, a lot of rainbow fish people use them. I've also used them for guppies, but the thing is with them, they're not very nutritious and they don't have a lot of protein. So a lot of people think they stunt their fish. I don't personally believe that this happens. There's a lot of other foods on this list that are a little bit more nutritious, like the egg yolk that I'd rather feed to them. If you're after something that's live and gonna entice fish to eat, microworms can be a really good option. They're super 
breezy to culture, like probably the easiest on this list and can be a really good food for your fry. Okay, and then number five on my list is gonna be another live food. And this one's very, very similar to the microworms, but a little bit different. And this is gonna be vinegar eels. So I only just recently got vinegar eels and they've actually worked really well for a few different things that I've tried them for. So they're a little bit smaller than the microworms and they last a little bit longer in the water than microworms do. Basically what they are are pretty much the same thing as the microworms, just little tiny worms. And the way you culture them is actually in a bottle of apple cider vinegar. So you mix them in with apple cider vinegar and a little bit of water and you drop a couple of pieces of apple in the bottom and that's how you culture them. And then what you do is you just harvest them out, feed them to your fish and they're a pretty decent live food. There's a few things that I don't like about these guys. Firstly, they don't have a lot of nutrition so they're pretty similar to the microworms. The only benefit is they're a little bit smaller so if you have some really tiny fry, that can be really good for them. The second thing is they're not really reliably cultured so when you harvest them you need five or six cultures to have a consistent supply of these guys to feed you a fry. Otherwise, if you have one culture, it's not gonna work very well. The other thing that's good about them is they're so easy to culture. Like, I've seen people keep cultures for two years, not even touch them, and then come back to them and harvest out of them. And you don't have to really maintain them at all. And they're pretty clean, they don't smell too bad. For all those reasons, they're pretty good. I don't really use them in my room. I have microworms and I also have vinegar eels in my room, but I don't really use them that much because there's some other alternatives on this list that I'm gonna talk about now. Okay, and then number six on my list is gonna be infusoria. This is another funny one, and the good thing about infusoria is chances are if you have an established tank you already have a culture of infusoria so I've actually got videos on my channel of infusoria you guys can go and find but infusoria what it is is tiny little paramecians infusoria is a term for just like groups of tiny little microorganisms that you naturally find in your water what this food's going to be really good for is newborn fry like rams and rainbow fish and even bettas because those guys are too small to eat the microworms and the vinegar eels right from the start so a lot of people like to use infusoria for like the first two days of their lives. What you do to culture infusoria is you take a bit of aquarium water, rot down some vegetables or mix in some yeast into that water. What they'll do is actually eat all that like bacteria that comes from the rotting vegetables or the yeast, turn the water clear and you'll see there'll be like a massive population of these guys. In my opinion, they're pretty nutritious. It's what the fish would eat in the wild and they work pretty well, but they're not like a long-term food. They're just like a first food for the first day. So if you guys have some newborn rams or some really small fry, these are probably gonna be the best option for you if you're trying to raise those fish up. I also use these in tandem with egg yolk and it works fantastic. Okay, and so the moment you've all been waiting for, if you guys have been watching the channel for any period of time, you know what this food's gonna be. And number one on my list is gonna be live baby brine shrimp. There's nothing that's gonna compare to this food. Live baby brine shrimp is one of the best things you can feed in the entire aquarium hobby to any nano fish, especially fry, whether it be guppies, anything that's big enough to eat it, which is basically most fry except for rams and angelfish and things like that. Pretty much any fish will eat this right from the get-go. Baby brine shrimp's really good to feed to tons of things. It's full of protein. It's just literally, it's such a good food. I feed it to rams all the way through until I sell them. And it's it's really just such a good food. Like I can't even express how good it is. The way you culture baby brine shrimp is you, firstly you have to buy some eggs, or we call them cysts. You buy the cysts, you can get them on like eBay or whatever. You mix the cysts in with a bit of brine water, so salt water, and you just add an air pump, leave them at room temperature temperature or 24 to 25 degrees Celsius for 24 to 36 hours. They all hatch, you turn off the air, they all settle down on the bottom and you harvest them out and you feed them to your fry. I recommend using three different hatcheries at one go, harvesting once in the morning and once in the afternoon. And that way you always have something to feed in the morning and the afternoon and it's always fresh. A lot of people don't use baby brine shrimp and it's because they're kind of like scared of doing it. I can't stress to you guys enough how important it is to use baby brine shrimp if you're serious about breeding any fish, even gut it's such a miracle food, it's so good. It jerks around in the water and it just entices the fish to eat it. It's a saltwater organism, so it can't actually transfer any pathogens over to freshwater fish. It's just chock full of protein and macronutrients that are just so good for growing up little baby fish. The second I feed this to my fish, they grow fantastic and it's literally the key to any of my breeding success in the fish room. There you have it. Those are my favorite foods to feed to my fry. I hope you guys learned something from this video. If you did, please leave a like down below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.